Peace and blessings, beloved. It's your sis, Aisha Abdurrahman. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I have a very highly requested video. So since I did my Sierra Leone series, a couple of people have been asking me, hey, are you gonna do what to pack for Sierra Leone? So in today's video, I have my top things. I think there's about 10, maybe 15 things in here of what I think you should pack for your trip to Sierra Leone. So let's just get ahead, go right ahead and get into the video. So depending on the group that you go with, they're gonna give you a packing list. So African Ancestry has a packing list. It's a pretty generic packing list, I would say. Um, and even my list might be a little generic. I'm just gonna share some of the things that I took with me on my Sierra Leone trip. So the first thing is modest clothing. When you go to Sierra Leone, you aren't gonna see people wearing like tank tops or short, short shorts or things with their cleavage showing. Um, you will find women wearing, um, and I can only speak kind of for the women, sorry guys, um, not a guy, so, um, but even for the men, I would say still dress modest. Guys wear shorts, but their shorts are like to their knees. Um, you won't really find women wearing shorts. You'll find women wearing skirts, and they're usually to their knees or longer. Um, women will wear t-shirts. What I found was interesting is that even though um, women are Muslim, they'll have a t-shirt and then they'll have on their hijab. I thought that was interesting um, because that's not something that I really see here in the US. Um, usually we'll wear long sleeve shirts with our hijab um, or just no hijab at all. So it's not a mix of short sleeves and hijab, um, which actually made me feel a lot better is because there were times in Sierra Leone where I would just wear a t-shirt and wrap my hijab in a bun because it was very, very humid, very, very hot. Um, and so I stopped feeling guilty because Islam is practiced differently depending on where you go. You will find Muslim women wearing long abayas. You'll see a couple of niqabis there, um, but it's not very common. Um, you'll see a lot of women with, um, and if you are Muslim, with long um, abayas or long kimars. So I took two of them with me. I found those to be very comfortable because I could wear a tank top and then just put my long kimar on over it especially when it was a windy day, um, or I would wear one of my dresses that you know had short sleeves and just throw my long key mark over it. So I would say just dress modest, wear loose fitting clothing. Um, it's very humid. If you go in the rainy season, maybe take things to protect you from the rain. It's very windy, so I would not um, suggest an umbrella. Maybe take like a raincoat. Um, I did not go in the rainy season, so I can't speak for the rainy season. I don't think I wanna be in. Sierra Leone or Ghana during the rainy season. I don't even want to be, well, yeah, here in the U.S. and the rainy season is nice if I'm inside. During the rainy season, you won't see Aisha outside at all. Um, yeah, no, that's not happening. So <laughs> I love the rain when I'm inside and I don't have to be out in the rain, but I digress. So modest, loose fitting clothing. It's very humid. Think New Orleans, think DC in the summertime. Um, or even in the spring. So when I was in DC in the spring, it was fairly warm, it was very humid and it rained. I loved it, I absolutely loved it because it wasn't um, pouring down rain, like uh, dangerous rain, but I loved it. So modest, lightweight clothing. Um, I highly suggest that you don't take jeans. I took jeans to Ghana, I took jeans to Sierra Leone and I regret it. I'm a jeans girl. I don't really wear a lot of skirts. I'm trying to get better with wearing skirts and dresses. I'm just not a girly girl. Um, I am a throw on some jeans, throw on my, my, my Tims, throw on my boots type of girl. So boots or flip flops and jeans is what I'm used to wearing. Um, so I don't know, I'm kind of a nature girl. I like to camp and hike and things like that. And skirts and dresses are just not my thing. However, I highly suggest skirts and dresses for Sierra Leone. So I did take some dresses and I took some skirts and I felt very weird when I wore them. Um, I don't know, I'm just not used to wearing them. They look cute, but I like my jeans, but they're very uncomfortable. You're gonna sweat. Um, if you've got you know, big hips and things like I do, take some baby powder or you can wear like, um, even with my skirts and dresses, I wore like very long, um, like maybe thigh length um, shorts or underwear. So you don't chafe, you don't have any rubbing or anything going on because you're gonna sweat. So I feel like powder is not very helpful in that situation. 
um, but yeah some kind of like shorts that come to your thighs I would wear under your dresses under your skirts um, yeah that's my suggestion for clothing um, the next thing is hats. I always wear hats in the summer, even here in the US. I burn easy, so I get sunburn on my nose. I also tend to have a heat rash, so I don't like to have things on my neck, which is why you guys will find that in the summer, I don't really wear my hijab over my neck, is I will break out in a heat rash. Um, so I try and let the, um, the air flow so that my sweat ducts don't get, um, uh, what's the word? So my pores can stay open. Um, you're gonna sweat a lot in Sierra Leone. It's not unbearable, but I took a hat. I took a baseball cap like this, and then I took a really big Fufu Sun hat. Um, I feel like the Fufu Sun hat was really good because it also protected my neck. They have those hats that you can wear that have like this flap or like a scarf that hangs down. Um, or you can wear a scarf over your neck. I just find that um, I don't want anything touching my neck or on my neck your girl's getting older so we don't want stuff touching the neck so a hat or a couple of hats um, is highly suggested the other thing is a money belt or money clip what I purchased was this I think we got it from Target um, so I like it because it says it has RFID um, that stops like some people will try and hack into your stuff uh, I went to Vegas one year and there's some people kind of just standing on the side with their phone and they'll kind of like flash their phone like near you and I don't know if that's how they're doing it if that's how they're hacking into phones or into something but apparently this has RFID stop so it protects your electronic equipment so I kept my money and I'll show you guys um, the picture of the, the Leones you have to keep cash on you in Sierra Leone um, some people will take money gram, but then you have to get their name and their information and their, their WhatsApp number and all that. It's a pain. Um, and you have to set up your information. So I highly suggest that you just keep cash and keep, keep a good amount of cash on you. So I kept all of my cash in here, my passports, my phone. Um, and so it has Velcro here at the top and then it's got zippers on the side. And then it has this zipper on the side and then it has this pocket inside for your passports your covid and all that and then it's kind of like has this mesh so it's like two pockets like a pocket in a pocket and so what i would do is i would wear mine like this so i'm kind of short so you can't see so i would wear mine like this or i would wear it like this and put another jacket or something over it because I didn't want this to just be sitting. It's kind of obvious, especially if you've got a lot of money in there, it's pretty obvious. Or if you're wearing it like this, that's pretty obvious. And it's also heavy on your neck, on your body. So I kind of just wanted to keep my stuff not hidden. I didn't feel like I was gonna get robbed in Sierra Leone. I'm so sick of people saying, I don't know. I'm, and maybe it's just me. I wasn't robbed in Sierra Leone. I wasn't robbed in Ghana. I went out shopping by myself well, with another woman um, at night in Sierra Leone. I went shopping by myself um, in Sierra Leone. There was no time that I ever felt unsafe or that I was gonna get robbed. I think the worst thing that happened was um, me and another lady were walking from the restaurant back to the hotel at night by herself. And this guy yells, I love women. That's it, like that was the worst you get way worse here in the US. There are places here in the US where I will not walk by myself at night. So I felt perfectly safe. Um, for me, it was just, I didn't wanna be flaunting or flashing what I have. Um, so yeah, I would keep my, um, like I would like, if I have another shirt, I would wear it under here and then, you know, put this shirt over it and then kind of pull it out to the side, open this, grab my money like that um and people are very respectable so if you're like oh let me see how much money i have and you turn your back to go count your money they're gonna move out of your way they're gonna give you your space they're gonna respect you and they're gonna be like oh, okay go ahead and count your money um i love sierra leone it just feels like home i don't i don't um i don't know some people have had issues in sierra leone 
Um, I think they're just on guard when you go. You can't go to Sierra Leone on guard. You can't go and travel to international places in fear. I mean, have they used smart? Yes, but fear, no. So I had my money bag. Um, I also, because I'm very, um, I don't know what's the word, um, highly sensitive, I guess. I get um, vertigo very easily, even when I'm on my phone. If I'm in my car and I'm on my phone, I'll get vertigo. Sometimes, just because my husband might drive crazy, I'll have bouts of vertigo. I'll wake up in the morning and I just have vertigo really bad for a few hours. Um, but if you have motion sickness problems and you have vertigo or you just have a sensitive stomach, you want to take some Dramamine. So you can get Dramamine like this. Um, you can get, I think this is so hilarious. And people are like, oh, let me show you. Come on, focus. Okay, so you can get Dramamine like that or you can get Dramamine like this. I highly suggest this. It's smaller, you can take it. You can put it in this bag, which I did. You can put it in your pocket. I kept it in that bag. Um, this is the original formula. This is going to knock you out. <laughs> they have one that comes in a capsule like this that's non-drowsy. Make sure you get the non-drowsy. You don't want to be drowsy in Sierra, in Sierra Leone. Um, so you want to take your Dramamine, um, I think, an hour before. So take one to two tablets every four to six hours, no more than eight tablets in 24 hours. So half hour to an hour before starting activity. So for me, I think half hour is good. Um, I think maybe an hour. So for me, I took mine a half hour and it didn't really kick in on my boat ride from Lungi to Freetown. I did that half hour thing. I needed an hour, 45 minutes to an hour before you're gonna be on a ferry boat ride or something like that, or on the plane. Um, so that's a drama I mean. The other thing is your electric converter. So my husband explained this to me because he's the techie guy. Um, he said that this is a bit much. So we had these when we went to Ghana and what it does is it actually converts your electricity because I guess, um, like in Sierra Leone, it's 120. I'll have to maybe have my husband explain it. Um, so this is um, a power converter. So not only does it come with these different plugs for your outlets, these are what you really, really need. Um, so it comes with all these different plugs. If you have, um, I forgot what it's called, but if you have one that looks like that, on your like I believe when I bought my iPad in Brussels it came with kind of like a European plug already that's good for Sierra Leone so I'll show you guys a picture of what the plugs look like um, but essentially what I did is I and it has USB ports you don't have to have a power converter but you do need to have the proper adapters so if you have um, something that allows you to change your adapter like a plug like this that's universal that's good enough you don't have to have the actual power converter is how my husband explained it to me after we went to Ghana so essentially I just take this plug it on and then plug that into the wall like that so whichever one I want to use I'll take this and then it has those things at the top plug that in plug that into the wall and then all of my US type of plugs, my laptop, my phone, whatever I plugged into here. Um, I'll put a link in the description for this one. Um, and then maybe I'll have my husband explain um, how to properly use it. I don't know. He was just like, babe, you need this thing. I was like, okay, buy the thing, use the thing. <laughs> so that's how that happened. Hubby was like, you need the thing, I got the thing. You don't like me? Don't be close. Get a little closer. <laughs> don't be shy. Get a little closer with air and extra dry. I'm so old. Are you going to prompt me or do you want me to just explain? I want you to explain the thing.
Okay. When you go overseas or when you leave the United States, electricity runs at 240 volts. Most what's modern- our, What's our electricity? Oh, in the United States, our electricity is 110 to 120 volts. Um, most people say 120. But when you go overseas, it's 240. And that's pretty much everywhere overseas. And the plugs also change. So most modern appliances today, um, and you probably can't see that, but most modern appliances today go from 100, <laughs> uh, they go from 100 to 240 volts. So that means the only thing that you need to do is change the adapter. This is a MacBook plug, but you can find it for an iPhone or Android too. You just have to change the adapter to th something like this. Now, it, there are other countries that have this three prong style as well, which is a little different, but you can buy a kit that has different types of plugs. See, here's the two prong international. And um, if you just Google international plugs, you'll see um, by country, or region basically or, or across the world what type of adapter they use whether they use this three prong or this um and, and then yeah there, there's this i think this one is used in australia or china where it's just three straight prongs i don't know why they they do this but but I, they do i mean here's there's another one it's 250 volts and um yeah it's just different countries use different ones, but outside of the United States, it's generally 240 volts, maybe 250. Um, so is that more power? Yeah, it's more so electricity. It's yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a higher electric, uh, electrical rating. I mean, if you work in like a data center or something here in the United States, they might be running 240 and not 120, but they'll just use a regular plug so what if um don't have a plug in mm -hmm. here. But, so what yeah. if they don't have this thing okay and they just so, have this here's thing. the difference this is a transformer and what this the, or power converter and what this does is it changes the electricity so you would plug this into 240 and then this would convert it back to 120 just like you're here in the United States. But that you only need this if you have a plug that doesn't support 240 volts. So if the plug already supports 240 volts, you don't need so the like power a converter. So like your regular MacBook plug or your regular iPhone plug? Your regular iPhone plug should support 240 volts. So you could just buy one so of these? So you just buy one of these little <laughs> adapter doohickeys. Or, I mean, you may have to get a... Uh, a universal plug they make universal plugs where you can switch out the, the different connectors but that's all you need you don't you shouldn't need to so you don't to use have this. To have this you don't need the converter the converter is only if like for example a blow dryer if you're taking a blow dryer with you or if you're taking a um, curling iron or something like that those aren't 240 volts so you will need this if you take that with you overseas. But for most electronic devices, and you can just read it, it actually has on here one input 100 to 240 volts. If it says that, then you just need some type of adapter. Um, they actually sell um, power strips, not power converters, but power strips with plugs like these. So you can just plug your regular jack in here, but the power strip will plug into the wall international with the international plug. So um, the electric it says power converter. So the other thing I highly suggest is Google Fi. So I have um, an iPhone. You can also have it on Android. I have an iPhone. Actually, when I went to Ghana, I had Google Fi on this phone, on my Android phone. And then when I went to Sierra Leone, um, I had upgraded or something and got another iPhone. So you can also have it on your iPhone. So in Sierra Leone, I used my iPhone. 
I don't think it was even an option when I went to Ghana. But on in Ghana, I use it on my Android. And to me, um, the service is the same. It doesn't matter if it's iPhone or an Android phone. Google Fi allows you to have, and this is another thing I may just have to have my husband explain, nerdy tech stuff. <laughs> so Google Fi allows you to have unlimited data, unlimited, yeah, text, talk, internet, it's unlimited for a flat rate. I think why it was good for me to have Google Fi. Okay, so the major carriers here, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, um, they will work overseas, um, but it's very expensive to roam internationally, even with an international plan. I think um, most of the uh, most of the carriers will charge you whatever you're paying here in the United States, plus ten dollars a day for you to use their services overseas. But with Google Fi, even though you are paying you know, $60 a line for unlimited talk and text and un unlimited internet. Um, if you do have that package, you can take the Google Fi phone out, out of the country and then you will get the same unlimited talk and text um, and internet while you're overseas. So it's, it's much more affordable with Google Fi. But you have to start your plan before you leave the United States in order for it to take effect while you're overseas. What, um, what is that? that that's the, their requirement. You can't like say, oh, I'm just going to wait to activate until I get overseas. Because once you try and activate it overseas, it's not going to work for you. You're going to be paying, paying per day for using it. Yeah. And per minute. So you have to activate it if you're leave it on the 15th you need to activate it on the first of the month um so that you have a continuous coverage that covers you while you're overseas hmm. but it it makes things a lot cheaper um and some countries you'll have to look up because some countries you might be charged for making regular phone calls if you're not on wi-fi but the internet and the texting will be unlimited but the but internet and texting is on it but wi-fi is not no the calling is not unless you're on oh, wi-fi okay. yeah unless you're on wi-fi so if you if your hotel has wireless and you connect to their wireless with your phone and you make a phone call then it will go over wireless internet it won't go over the cellular network but if you're out in the mall or in a car and there is no wi-fi then you make a phone call it's going to charge you minutes so you should just use whatsapp yeah, use WhatsApp, use uh, Telegram, or... So do you um, need Google Fi still? No, you need Google Fi still, because if you were to take an AT&T, a T-Mobile, or a Verizon phone, you'd be paying $10 a day on top of your regular monthly fee, on top of your minutes for um, internet and, and texting and phone calls. So they charge you for everything if you take one of the other three carriers. All right, guys, that's it. So that's why I couldn't explain it. <laughs> I'd have him come and explain it to you because, yeah. I'm the nerd herd. That's, that's his thing, so. Yeah. All right, babe, thank you. You're welcome. So, and you can keep it on. So I have that phone, whether I'm in Sierra Leone or Ghana or not, it's on. Um, and I think it's like $10 a month if you just leave it on for when you need to use it. But that allows you to make international phone calls use the internet without having a surprising bill. Um, so that I highly, highly, highly suggest is Google Fi. Um, if you, and then I, I think when I went to Ghana, when I went to Ghana, I was doing my homework and I used my Google Fi to connect to the internet in Accra as well as in Elmina and I had no problem. So my husband had some issues on his laptop. Um, it could be like how much, um, is it memory? It could be the type of laptop you have or whatever reason. My laptop worked fine. His did not. I was able to get my homework done, connect to the internet with no issues. Whereas for him, he had to go up at a higher elevation up to where the cafe was in Elmina for, to get his internet to connect properly. I don't know. Um, but I think Google Fi is really good. The other thing is I would take a backpack. So I am a backpack girl. I don't like purses. I don't like things hanging on my arm. 
I like a backpack because then it leaves my hands free, it leaves my shoulders free. So I took a small bag, small backpack with me um, for like beach days or just to be out and about for the day. Um, I would throw this in my backpack, throw, you know, a water bottle and my fan in my backpack just for the day. So a smaller bag or a smaller backpack is really good. African Ancestry will give you like, um, a, like it's like a, a fanny pack or like you could wear it as a crossbody bag. It was kind of small. Um, it was okay. I couldn't really fit a water in there, but it was good for like your money or a fan, um, some like face wipes, stuff like that for the day. So you want a small bag that you're just gonna have for your day. I also have this bag, which I wanna suggest. So I used a Brevite bag. Um, I really like the quality of this bag. I took it with me to Ghana. I took it with me to Sierra, to Sierra Leone. So you can use this as a regular backpack. Um, I also have a High Spirit bag. High Spirit, what I like about their bags, I don't have that one that they have, but I'm gonna, I want, I really wanna get it. Um, it has the zipper on the inside. That way when you're wearing it, you don't have to worry about theft or anything like that. So high spirit bags are really great bags. However, they are not um, camera bags. They're not laptop bags. So I use my Brevite bag um, for my trips because it can be used as a regular backpack, but it's also a camera bag. And being a content creator, this keeps all of my gear. So, scoot back a little bit. So this bag, so what I like is it has this strap down here, which you can put your tripod, you can put um, uh, like a, a yoga mat, you can put anything down here. You can put your prayer mat. If you're Muslim, you can put a prayer mat. So I've used this for several different things under in the bottom. So I've put my tripod here, I've put my prayer rug here, and then, um, this is adjustable. So it's a really good investment. Um, I like all the colors. I want to get another one, but I wanted to show you, I have a video. I'll just put a link in the description. When I was packing for Ghana, all of the stuff I was able to put in here. So I put my camera and these, you can take these in and out to adjust for your lenses. So I like that, you can take them in and out. So I put all of my camera gear in here, um, and it's very, very padded. It's very squishy. So it has a lot of compartments. So it has this area, which is for kind of for a camera. Um, and then it has this side pocket here, which opens. I kind of don't like that. This opens to the big part of, of the bag, which is kind of weird to me. And then it has this here on the side you can use for like a cup or something and then you or even like a tripod and then you can bring this over and connect it so it has this to connect like that so you can put something here i usually put a cup there like a big tall cup you could put there um and then it has the major zip here So you can also take that one out. It's got a lot of these things to make different compartments. So does this one come off? Yeah, this one comes off. That can come off, so it's all just one whole big thing. So you can customize it and make those compartments however you want. It doesn't fully open. It would be nice if it like fully opened like this does. Um, and then has this compartment here which is what I used for my laptop so I will link a video um, it's a reel that I made on Instagram I think it was my first reel and it shows all of the stuff I was able to fit in here so I was able to fit my passport my drone my camera all my lenses my tripod um, some USB sticks I was able to put um, so much stuff in here oh and then it has this other little pocket USB. So it has this, which is where you can keep all your USBs and SD cards and stuff like that in there. So it's made for camera gear. Um, but yeah, I like it. I was able to put a lot. Um, it's easy to just wipe off to clean. 
uh, which is very important when you're traveling, especially because of COVID, you wanna have something that you can clean off really easily. So your backpack. The other thing I highly suggest that you take with you to Sierra Leone are face towels. So here in the US, we wash our face and we wash our body with a face towel. It's probably like this big, you guys know what I mean. They don't have those um, at the hotels in West Africa. They have the bigger towels, which we would normally like dry our hands with and then they have the full body towels. Um, and that is because most people in West Africa will use like a loafah or a body scrub to bathe themselves. They feel, they feel like it's very unsanitary and nasty of us to be bathing with a towel. Um, so I would take, you know, one for your face, one for your body because they don't have them. Um, but the only thing is washing them, having them laundered you would maybe have to wash them yourself. I don't like to use my my body towels, my face towels, maybe twice. I try and switch them out so you maybe wanna wash it, let it dry out before you reuse it. Maybe take a couple, take two or three. Um, so face towels and toiletries, um, you know, they have those little shampoos and conditioners, the little teeny tiny ones, not really for our hair type. Um, I wish they had like local company, like Shea Butters and local companies that make shampoos. That would be really cool. Um, so your own toiletries, your own towels. I also highly suggest you get some disposable sheets. Um, there is a black owned company that I learned about during my trip to Sierra Leone that makes disposable travel sheets. They actually have like a whole travel set. I will also link them in the description below. So a friend loaned me her disposable sheets. So that's a whole nother video. I talked about why you might need disposable sheets for your trip to Sierra Leone. So we stayed at the Radisson Blue in Freetown. Sheets were perfectly great. Comforter was clean. And they came and cleaned my room every day or every other day, no problem. In the Providences, that's another story. You're gonna need disposable sheets. The other thing you're gonna need is water shoes. Um, preferably closed toe water shoes so that you can bathe in tubs or showers that may not be to your liking. Um, so when I go camping, I take shower shoes when, if I'm going to use the public restrooms. That way, when you're standing in the shower, you know, don't touch anything in the shower, but you can stand, you know, on the floor of the tub of the shower, not with your bare feet. So I wouldn't take flip flops because they're open toe. Um, I don't know. I'm a just I'm a germaphobe, so some water shoes or even like swim shoes, something that you can um, easily get wet while you're in the shower, bathe, take them off, and let them dry. Um, the other thing, kind of obvious, is sunscreen. Yes, black folks need sunscreen. We still need sunscreen. Please use sunscreen. Um, a lot of us will deal with skin cancer issues later in life if you don't use sunscreen. So I like to use black girl sunscreen. It's available at Target. Um, sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen is needed. Even if you're dark skin, you still need sunscreen. I'm I'm gonna say this till I'm blue in the face. There's a lot of people in my family, girl, we black, we don't need sunscreen. I'm dark skin, when it you still need sunscreen. It's not sun tan lotion, it's sunscreen. It's to protect your skin from the UV rays from the sun. You need sunscreen to protect your skin from the sun. It's not meaning you're not gonna get any sun, it just is protecting you from the UV rays, from the harmful things that the sun can do to your skin. Um, Please use sunscreen, black people. Please use sunscreen, okay? Um, the next thing on my list is malaria pills. Okay, so, and medicines, diary medicine. Okay, so this is the deal. When I went to Ghana, it was my first trip out of the US, I was told, you need your yellow fever shot, and you need this shot, and you need that shot, and you need malaria medicine and you need diarrhea medicine and you need this medicine and that medicine so i did all the things i got all the shots got the well yellow fever is required to get to pretty much any of the ECOWAS, any of the west african countries you need yellow fever shot um i think malaria is also a shot i've got malaria pills when i went to ghana they also gave me pills for in case of diarrhea um I don't know. I don't want to make. I don't want to make it 
I don't want to make it um, less than what it is. I don't want to blow it off because my husband has a sensitive stomach and he had some issues um, in Ghana. I don't know what he ate. We ate the same thing. I have not had any problems with diarrhea, with the water, with anything. Yeah, I buy water when I went to Ghana. Um, bottled water, bag water, no problems, okay? Um, so, I'm not a medicine person. Half the time I forget to take my medicine. So there were a lot of days where I missed those malaria pills in Ghana. You're supposed to take them like three or four days before you leave. Then you're supposed to take them like once a day while you're there. And then three or four, and then for three or four more days when you're back. Half the time I forgot to take them pills. So for Sierra Leone, I did not take any malaria medicine. I did not buy any malaria medicine. I did not get any malaria shots. I was fine. I didn't have any problems with diarrhea. I didn't have any problems with mosquito malaria symptoms. None of that. Now, malaria is a thing. People that live in Ghana, people that live in Sierra Leone battle with malaria. My suggestion is, and malaria pills are expensive, so I have medical insurance. So it's free for me. But if you don't have medical insurance, malaria pills can be like, what, $300, somebody said? So the suggestion is get your malaria pills in Sierra Leone at a pharmacy, a clinic, ask somebody because they deal with malaria all the time. It's a normal thing like our flu here in the US. Um, get your malaria pills in Sierra Leone because it's cheaper and probably most likely because you might not need them. I didn't need them. Most likely you're not gonna need them. And from what I've been told is people will take them when you need them, if you need them. Don't just take them every day just be, just in case, like they tell us to do here in the US. One, taking medicine unnecessarily is not healthy, it's not good for you. I don't know what's in the malaria pills that makes them necessarily a preventative. I'm just not a fan of, of taking me medicine unnecessarily. So I suggest you get your malaria pills in Sierra Leone. They're easy to get, easy to find. The hotel may even have them. Get them in Sierra Leone. That's my suggestion. They're not required. Um, you do have to get your yellow fever. You do have to have your COVID. Um, I think you have to be vaccinated. Yeah. You have to have vaccination or a letter and a good reason that you're not vaccinated. Um, the other thing, the last thing on my list is a beach towel or a yoga mat for the beach. So um, I did not have any of these. I totally forgot. Um, I think a yoga mat is really nice because it rolls up, it's portable, it's travel friendly, it can get wet. So if you have one of those like um, foamy yoga mats, um, I like those. So either a yoga mat or a beach towel for the beach because you're going to go to the beach a couple of times. So that's pretty much it for my packing list, guys. Um, I will put a link in the description to my packing list. So I will make you guys a packing list that you can have, um, I'll make it a PDF form that you can use on your phone or your tablet or your computer so you don't have to print it out. I can just check it off as you're packing. Um, I will add some additional things to that packing list. Um, so I will link it in the description below. It will take you to my website probably to a packing list. All right guys, that's it. Life is good, have a blessed day.